Hi, my name is DJ Rap, and welcome to the MTC Music Tech Collective YouTube channel. Today we're going to learn how to use FM synthesis with Operator. So without further ado, let's take a look at Operator. Um, it's a lot more complicated than analog, but I always suggest starting off with analog because then you can work your ways up to the bigger toys, which is cool. Okay, so analog here, two oscillators nice and easy and we're using a subtractive synthesis with analog with the use of a filter to cut out certain frequencies we don't like that's the main difference between this and operators that we're using FM synthesis which is uh, attached to pitch using modulation and also there are four oscillators if you look here one two three four so already way more detailed than analog um, I like to use analog for the more housey stuff, you know, it's a little warmer, um, whereas when I'm getting to more abrasive digital sounds, I start creeping up with uh, operator and then I end up using simpler, which gives me options for both. So, okay, let's go to uh, operator and take a look at what's going on here. Let me arm this track. So, four oscillators, one, two, three, four. Numerous waveforms, if you go here, you can select what you want. By default, it always goes to sign. This is the volume. Up, up, up. All right, I'm going to turn that up. This is my carrier, and all these others are modulators. They're going to be modulating each other through pitch, uh, which will eventually affect the carrier. Here we have our algorithms, and there are 11 algorithms, and one of my favorite tricks to do, they each produce a different sound. Once I finish polishing or sculpting a sound, I like to go to my Max for Live and put the Max for Live LFO on here, and then automate going through these, uh, especially when you're working with call and response bases. It's really cool, like dubstep or whatever, right? So, okay, let's move on. So here we have an uh, envelope, and we also have the oscillator window. Uh, much like in analog, when I uh, always, you could save a preset, by just right clicking and save as default preset always have a standard gate message and the reason we want that is we don't want any tail end off a uh, off a bass line it needs to be a short note right and stop at the end of it so that's what we got going on there nice sub here we have the course and uh, course tuning it's not quite octaves it doesn't work that way but obviously nice heavy sub which you probably can't hear right now you've got your fine tuning fixed and the level so if we look here we have a square standard gate message and we have the typical uh, gangsters attack decay release uh, sustain so you also have initial which is completely different and uh, this is different it gives you the value of the note exactly when it's triggered so if you see me working it right here I can go and do a little more options than I could typically in analog which doesn't have the initial parameter okay you have a looping function the same as an analog as well here's your loop um, let's see how this basically works so my carrier I'm gonna turn on the next oscillator uh, for now I want to put this on a saw 64 saw being the brightest waveform that I can use sub being most tone and pure and square being a combination of the two but saw has the brightest frequencies the most frequencies as you can see there's no gaps in between these um, you know I can bring these all the way up as well and make it full um, and square if you look has more gaps in it so it's a combination I think of the both that's the way I like to look at it but I want to go for a saw 64 right now now I'm going to incorporate that and this is uh, modulating this carrier and affecting it through vibration remember I have said before the range of human hearing 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz so it's vibrating at it well, oscillating at a really fast speed and that's how we're hearing that right so you can see right away, huge effect, makes a huge difference. So we could do some really interesting sounds with this. You could put the next one on as well and say, okay, here I'm gonna go with a square, let's say, and then incorporate that as well. And as you can see, these work well when they're moving. When they're just static like that, eh. But when you put like an LFO MIDI and start having things move or put these within a rack and just have them uh, automated, uh, it becomes really exciting, especially for music like electro, dubstep, drum and bass. This is the kind of stuff I'm going to be pulling. I'm going to be using this, the operator, rather than the analog. Okay, so uh, we could have this uh, particular last one be something I'll do in the user file. Maybe I'll have a combination. If I right click here, they can all be even, they can all be odd. Combination of two. See what we get. So 
So now we have something that's really fierce and I like that. It's super easy to do just by manipulating the volume levels. Um, the next thing we can do, of course, if we want, is uh, start to affect this with, the vo with looping. So here we have a loop and of course we want to go to our envelope and what I'm going to do is set the attack not too far pull down the decay a little bit very cool and let's have it loop to I don't know it could be synced and subdivision of time whatever we want sixteenths whatever we want so now we can have this You can do some really cool stuff just by simply looping. I'm just showing you real quick ways to get around here to give yourself something interesting to do. Um, okay, like I said, this is just an intro to uh, Operator and FM Synthesis. So we're going to scoot over to the other side of Operator and we're going to take a look at this section here. So you have an LFO section, a filter section, and a pitch section. Uh, when I have this sound, I've turned the loops off. This is our straight sound that we had before. One of the things I love to do is immediately put spread on. It makes everything sound better. I'm going to turn the LFO section on. By default, it has uh, all of these A, B, C, D, which pertain to the oscillators. And what I want it to affect is I'm going to turn all of these off right now. That's how you turn them on or off. And I'm just going to have the filter be on. So right now the filter is on, so the LFO is going to affect the filter. I want to give myself a nice shape in the filter window here in the envelope and what I'm going to do, I'm using a, tw a 24 cut which is sharper than a 12 cut. Uh, I'm using uh, the, this particular filter here, there's m millions of filters here you can use, I mean I love it, well not millions, but you've got your MS2, SPD and it all depends on how much dirt you want on your filters. The rate, the amount, uh, whether you want it synced, low, high. Uh, re-trigger, the type of wave you want, let's pick triangle. So of course when you incorporate that with the looping, you can get some interesting things. Let's go back to the envelope here, let's give ourselves a loop. Just turn this off for now. Let's loop this to, let's do it to sync. And now if I put the LFO on as well, I get some really cool, interesting variations and different patterns, which is awesome. and play around with that as you wish. Um, there are all kinds of interesting uh, things to do here. You've got your attack, your slopes, little blue dots, see? They change here. Attack, slope, um, the shape, whether you want it curved. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff to play with there as well. Tone, volume, This is these are global controls. So the time parameter here is any parameters you have set on, on, on the operator. If you go to the right, they're all gonna play faster. If you go to the left, they're all gonna play slower. Right, uh, so we'll leave that at zero. Your tone. And like I said, sometimes I do like to flick between. See, when you flick through these algorithms, you get a different tone. Okay, it's a very quick overview of Operator. It's a lot more to it than that. It's a magnificent device to play with. But I hope I got you at least excited about it a little bit. Okay, thanks for your love and support and liking us on this page and subscribing to this page and giving us the love on social media. It does mean a lot to me. It takes a lot of work to do the video, so I like to know that you're watching them. Thanks a lot, Lover Base. I'll see you in a couple of weeks with my next video. Bye.